Hey everybody and welcome to part two of breaking down the return of Bill Wirtz. If you caught part one, then you know I'm a Bill Wirtz fan and we spent uh, that whole video diving into one of Bill's new tunes and the composition, the, 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 the musical fluency and some of the theory that's inside of Bill's work is just awesome to check out and to break down. So this is part two of that video because it, we, things got a little out of hand and we just, we recorded for like 45 minutes straight. So let's dive back into where we were and check out the incredible music that's going on here. Some Flip the major. Everyone nice. knows that the world is cold and you can warm it up with a little true love. And I wish to explain those little those little interjections that lead us from place to place, adding tons of color but not totally changing where we're going. That's the stuff that that's I love it. Warm it up with a little true love. Just, I, I think it's it's some variation of, of D to B. World is cold and you can warm it up with a little true love. And I wish to yeah, explain yeah. all the ways that friends and lovers can go all the way. You know what I love a lot about Bill's lyric style? Obviously like, you know, when you're listening to the words, you're like, I don't know what any of this means, but it feels happy, all right. Like that's basically <laughs> Bill's lyrics in a nutshell. It seems like, it's almost like he writes these lyrics out before he puts them to music. And I could be completely wrong about this. I don't know how he does it specifically, but I love the navigation of rhythm and the extension of phrases to fit certain statements in. So like if he writes a line, and this is a good example right here, is that there's no real way to like just fit it into like a, a default normal sounding 4-4, four, four, you know, uh, grouping of four bars or something like that. To get around these syllables and the number of words that need to fit in, he just like changes rhythms and extends things and creates syncopation to just make everything sound so smooth. And sometimes it changes, there might be a, 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 an extra half a bar or something, an odd meter briefly or something like that. Um, and then sometimes there's not even, and it's just a clever mixing of syncopation that makes you think there's something interesting going on with the time signature, but there's really just not. It's just navigating, adding an extra bar here and there, something like that. Warm it up with a Love Bill's willingness to use that super simple harmony. Got money, some cash, keep it in my head. All right, so we're moving to like a C sharp minor sound, going between like the one and the four, right there. Got money, some cash, keep it in my head. So we have a split second there of of going into E major. Like that's what it feels like right there. Because we go to this kind of B uh, sus dominant. What is it? My head and I think about yeah. Da, 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 da. You expect it to go da da, but it doesn't. I it all day, but I can't spend. Got money, some cash, keep it in my head. And again, you expect that to go back to where we were. We were just in minor, but it doesn't. It goes into this whole new section yet again. Got money, some cash, keep it in my head, and I think Are we going to E? Day, no. I can't spend it. Hello, it's a Tuesday show, cause Wednesday seems so long ago. I said it three or four songs ago. It's time for the show. Got some money in my hat, and it makes me seem tall. Now we're back to where we were at the beginning. We don't, it doesn't sound like we're explicitly using that same. 
But we're still, we're back to F sharp minor, and now we take it to like a new place again. Got some money in my hat, and it makes me seem tall. I can see where all the money in the world has gone. So we do the same type of thing there that we did just before. We kind of imply that we're gonna go to this new major place, but it sets us up to kind of go back to where we just were. And yet again, we go to an entirely new section. Check it out. I can see where all the money in the world has gone. It's across the floor of the ocean. All right, so now we're sort of in this vamp, this G flat major seven. Kind of like one, one five-ish sound, just. We just sort of hover there. The thematic writing, bringing these ideas full circle to now meld them into a new idea. And it brings us to this final part of the song, which is, I mean, it kind of is like another vamp, but it's going to a totally new place. And we're now, we've now worked our way after touching on that original minor theme like we had before. Now we go to a new place. Where we're just gonna go back and forth between G minor and E minor like G minor 11, E minor 11, you know, however you want to structure that. Money is bad, I don't understand what to do with it. Or how to deal with it, yeah. And tell my friends. What it does. What a cool uh, in between there. Ah, oh, I don't know the, the, those that because it's basically the same chord, just moving uh, a minor third away. G minor, E minor. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, hold on. <laughs> now, that stuck out to me, the re and I was trying to figure out what it was earlier, and I was like, I don't, okay, I don't know. Um, but I just figured it out. And the reason it's so cool is this. So, I'm kind of using the Dorian mode. Okay, so if you're taking the major scale, let's take, um, the first chord is G. Let's take G major. 
The Dorian mode is that scale, but we're gonna make the third flat and the seventh flat. So rather than three, seven, we're now gonna have flat three, flat seven. That's Dorian. That's how we wind up with that sound. We're gonna do the same exact thing in E, which will wind up giving us. That's E Dorian, okay? So we have G, E. Now notice, in that E Dorian scale, there's a C sharp. Watch this. C natural. That one little bit there. There's a C natural in there. So it's a little bit different. We're kind of changing that sound from the, from the Dorian. We're now changing it to this. Which is, I don't it's just a slight little color variation. What a beautiful chord. Ah, gorgeous. On the last chord. Da, did you hear it? We've gone now back to that E Dorian with the C sharp. So it, we went. And then the next time around to end it, we bring that C sharp back. Yeah, so many tiny little variations. And these are the small little things that maybe a lot of people when they listen to Bill's music, you, you recognize like, wow, this sounds so cool, but you may not always be able to pinpoint why. This is why. It's all of these little intricate details, these, these little things that just make the music have that little extra kick. Just a bit of extra color in some of these harmonic motions. Taking something that your ear's expecting to hear, giving you that, but then giving you a slight variation on it. Just enough that you go, oh, that sounded really cool. That's like Bill's music in a nutshell. It's just, it's so thoughtful. Um, and I'm just, I'm always so impressed by the depth of harmonic knowledge that, that is there and that, that, is, that he uses to make this stuff. So I think I speak for everybody when I say we're super happy that Bill is back and the 3D thing is wonderful. So I'm super glad to see it. Bill, you're, you're killing it as always. So thank you for what you do. I just wanna take a moment to tell you about something I have been incredibly excited about and that is the launch of the brand new Cornell Music Academy. It is a course platform that we've just launched. We currently have our first full completed course on there, but we're gonna be adding courses to it regularly. And my long-term goal is to have essentially the equivalent of a fully scaled out music school available. You can get access to all of it for a single monthly subscription. And when you become a member, you get access to all of the private channels in our brand new Discord server. Thousands of you have already gone over there and become a part of the conversation, even just on the public side, but a membership will also get you access to the private channels, which I'm super, super excited about because that gives us a direct line of communication. We can talk about music and talk about your progress in the course and any other questions you may have. Also, by becoming an Academy member, you're going to get notified about the regular private live streams. If you're a member of the course, you're going to get access to these live streams, and it's a place where I'm going to be sitting here at the piano, and we're going to have a chance to talk directly. You can ask questions, and we can talk about things in real time. A lot of people People have even become a member just for access to the private Discord and the live streams. But of course, you're gonna get access to not only the intro to piano course that is currently up, but everything that we're going to be releasing in the future. I would love for you to check it out. It is the best way you can support the channel. And I so much appreciate everybody who has become a member so far. We are having an awesome time and I can't wait for you to join us. So please check it out at the link in the description below. And I hope to see you over there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.